Shares in TransCanada are down about 3% as the proposed Keystone XL pipeline is delayed again. The company's calling the delay inexplicable, noting the rerouting of the pipeline in Nebraska has already been approved. I'm Bill Draper with the News Talk 1290 CJBK Market Update. Well, the third to final hour will be a little bit controversial to start. I thought that this was an interesting take as I look over to my friend Tom Harris, who assures me, assures me that he is not a global warming denier. He's a climate change realist. But upset with this idea that 97% of climate scientists have concluded that human-caused climate change is happening. Well, he says, no, we agree with that. That's the wrong question and the wrong statement, though. We'll get the correction from him next as we continue London at Large in 60 seconds. News Talk 1290 CJBK, London at Large with Al Coombs. This was uh, this was going back a little while ago that somebody came out and said 97% of climate scientists have concluded that human-caused climate change is happening. And basically saying that anybody that disagrees is, is totally out of the norm. Well, our good friend Thomas Harris. Tom Harris is with Climate Science International. And he took exception and actually wrote a letter to the, uh, uh, a letter to the editor at, uh, for USA Today. Uh, Tom, thanks so much for joining us. I know that you kind of have wonky work hours, so I appreciate you doing this. Yeah, that's fine, Al. Uh, maybe maybe just go over your arguments that you wrote to the editor. Yeah, sure. You know, it's an urban legend that most scientists in the climate field actually think we're headed for dangerous human-caused climate change. I mean, that's simply an urban legend. They'll make statements like the one you just made. 97% of scientists agree that we're causing climate change. Right. Well, you know, first of all, you have to say, well, who are you asking? Are you asking, you know, solid-state resistor scientists? Are you asking biologists? Or are you asking people who study the causes of climate change? So it's only that small ladder set that it's important to ask. And the second question is, you don't ask them, do humans cause climate change? Of course we cause climate change when we cut down forests and we build cities or when we emit soot pollution, things like that. Yeah, we cause climate change, and we're probably causing some climate change due to our emissions of carbon dioxide and other greenhouse gases. But even that's not the question. The question is, are the climate changes we're seeing, you know, temperature rise and perhaps more storms, that's one of the arguments they make, is that being caused, and is it dangerous? Is it caused by our emissions of carbon dioxide? Because if it's not dangerous, while it's an interesting scientific question, you know, what causes this climate change, it, is, it shouldn't be a public policy issue. You know, for example, we're probably going to see, if in fact there's no cooling, and that's another debate, we're probably going to see an increase of perhaps a degree Celsius by the end of the 21st century. But that's not dangerous, and that certainly isn't worth billions of dollars. It's only if we're seeing temperature rises that are dangerous that we should be, you know, really concerned about it. And they've never done a poll with that question, okay? And we hear all these different scientific academies agree. But then you have to ask, but did the actual scientists within the academy actually agree? And usually the answer is no, because there hasn't been a single scientific academy that's actually polled its members and showed that a majority of them agree that we're causing dangerous climate change as a result of our greenhouse gas emissions. So the whole thing really is an urban legend. So, so why is there so much confusion around this? Why, why can't we just come to a consensus in saying either climate change exists, but it's not as bad as we're worried about, uh, climate change exists, uh, and it's all man's fault and we should all be worried about it, or climate change, uh, there are some people that still say climate change isn't happening. Yeah, well, there's two answers to your question. First of all, because scientists themselves don't know. In fact, I ask scientists behind closed doors, you know, where they're not being quoted in the press and they don't have to worry about their research funding. I say, what's it going to be like in 20 years? And invariably they say, ah, ask me in 20 years. <laughs> right. I mean, they don't really have a clue. So the truth is, if the scientists don't know what the future of climate is going to be, then, of course, these activists have no clue either. But there's an enormous amount of funding going on. You know, right now, a billion dollars a day is being spent worldwide on climate finance. And 94% of that is going to try to stop what might happen 50 years from now. Okay, only 6% is going to help people today who are affected by climate change because, of course, climate always changes. Deserts advance. 
In the north of Canada, we have houses falling down because of melting permafrost. There's no question these people need help. But the idea that we should spend almost a billion a day, 94% of it, on what might happen in 50 years is ridiculous, okay? When I was at the Copenhagen conference, um, you know, in, 19, in 2009, I, I was speaking to a guy who was one of the top African delegates, and he pointed to the TV screen at all the protesters outside. You know, they're saying, oh, stop climate change in the year 2080. It's going to be a horrible situation. He said, those people are crazy. He said, they're all protesting what might happen in 50 or 60 years. Years, my people need help now. And yet the whole focus, almost all the focus of all the climate debate is on trying to stop what might happen in the distant future to people who haven't even been born yet, okay, while people today are suffering due to climate change, and they get almost no support. So what we're seeing across the spectrum, left, right, and center, is people are starting to say, well, this is pretty screwy, letting people die today because of stopping what might happen in half a century? It doesn't make any sense. And that's one of the biggest immoral situations in the whole climate debate. We're speaking with Tom Harris. He's the executive director of the International Climate Science Coalition. Does not dispute that there is climate change happening. His argument is that perhaps we don't know enough about it to be investing the uh, the money that we are to try to stop it at this point. It sounds to me, though, that uh, uh, despite our efforts to stop it, it's really not doing a whole lot right now anyways. Would yeah. that be a, an accurate way of, uh, of painting the picture right now? Yeah, that's exactly true. And in fact, many people laugh and say, oh, the Kyoto Protocol and Al Gore, they were successful because, of course, there hasn't been any global warming in about 17 years. So people laugh that, you know, this is because we stopped it. You know, <laughs> oh, yeah, sure. Right. I mean, the bottom line is I'm looking out my window right now and I see clouds out there. And we cannot forecast how clouds move and how dense they're going to be over the next few weeks, let alone over centuries. And yet clouds have at least 10 times the influence on climate as all human activity combined. Okay, so until we can understand what nature would do without human involvement, we have no clue as to what's happening in the future. There are scientists, for example, at the observatory near St. Petersburg in Russia, really top solar scientists, and they say that right now the conditions on the Earth, or I should say on the Sun, are about the same as they were in the late 1700s. And after that, in the early 1800s, that's when we had the coldest conditions on Earth in 200 years. They say we're going back to that by 2055, plus or minus 11 years. They're saying we're headed for the next little ice age. So I think that the bottom line is we don't know what's going to happen. I don't necessarily believe the Russian scientists either. So I think we should help people adapt to climate change that really does happen instead of trying to play God with the climate. Let, let me play devil's advocate, okay, just for, for half a second, because you and I, we go way back, and you know most of the time I agree with a lot of your statements, right? So let me just play devil's advocate here for just half a second. Sure. If there is something that we could do, uh, we know, for example, that the only way that we can actually figure out how to predict it is by putting money into research. Oh, yeah. And, and, and so we want to put more money into research to try to stop climate change, because we know uh, uh, ultimately, in 100 years from now, it could theoretically be a huge danger to the world as we know it. Why wouldn't we want to try to protect ourselves from that? Well, what we need to do, just like you say, is to continue to research this very intensively, okay? Research funding for climate change has increased at least 10 times over the last, say, 15 years. And that's good, because civilizations that did not prepare for climate change, they died out. You know, you can see the examples through history, not only the Greenland Vikings, but there were various groups, you know, pre-Inca groups in uh, South America who actually did not adapt to climate change and they died out. So we do have to be able to predict climate change someday so that we can get ready for it. For example, if we have a slight cooling on the prairies, we could lose our wheat crop. And Canada, of course, is the breadbasket of the world. So if we can prepare for it, if we can develop new strains that can take cold weather, things like that, that's where we should focus our money on the research and then using that research to help prepare for it. But the trouble is, as I said before, 94% of all that billion dollars a day is going in to try to actually stop climate change that we somehow think is going to happen in the future. That's completely backwards. Uh, it certainly is an interesting debate. You're absolutely right that we could be putting that money into uh, uh, into protecting against people who, who are going to be harmed for it uh, right away. Oh, yeah, uh, some people are being hurt right now. I, I was just going to say, can you give some examples of the people that are being hurt right now? 
Well, sure. In the Sahel region of Africa, for example, the deserts are expanding in some areas, and that's undoubtedly due to natural climate change. The UN said two years ago that a million children were at risk of starvation in the Sahel. And part of the reason, I mean, there are other reasons like, you know, civil war and unrest and poverty, but part of the reason was climate change. And yet the UN couldn't get enough money to help these children. So many of them died. At the same time, they were pouring billions into climate change for 50 50 years from now. That's an example of complete misappropriation of money. We should help those children now in the Sahel. Um, it, it certainly is an interesting debate, and I would expect yourself uh, to uh, be on top of it and continuing it, no doubt, Tom. Thank you so much for the time today. Righto. All right, all the best to you. Bye. That is Tom Harris again. Tom Harris is the executive director of the International Climate Science Coalition. I just find this whole debate very interesting because it, it is very evident what Tom was pointing out, that nobody really seems to know what's going on. As much as everybody agrees, and, and he points out in, in uh, his letter to the editor, well, we agree that that humans are causing climate change. We We agree with that. But are you asking the right people? And if so, are you asking the right questions of those right people, et cetera, et cetera? It seems to me that when it comes to climate change, we're guessing. Because only five years ago, we were calling it global warming until we realized, oh, that's not the right term. There's no question the climate is changing. But the question should be, as Tom says, well, what is the right way to deal with it? That should be the debate. What is the right way to deal with it? Is the right way to throw tons of money into research and gimmicks in trying to block it, uh, into policy, uh, in trying to make sure that we're, we're more responsible? Well, sure, that's all well and good. We should be more responsible. But do we do that at the expense of the people that, uh, that are in uh, the Sahara Desert, like you just pointed out, that are feeling the effects of it right now? Or should we maybe funnel some of the money over there to try to help them cope? and say to us over here in, in North America, well, listen, just keep doing what you're doing, keep composting, recycling, keep using your hybrid cars, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. It's a very interesting debate. This is London at Large on News Talk 1290 CJBK.